Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle. Everyone says that my, my nothingness, my principle of nothingness, is the same as Eckhart Tolle's, and of course many, there were many uncharitable interpretations that I've been stealing my nothingness principle from Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle. With all due respect to spiritualists and other uh, self-styled gurus like Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle discusses something completely different. He discusses what, what used to be called ego death, no self. These are desired goals in many mystical traditions, and the experienced outcomes of psychedelics and practices such as medi meditation are often compared to, to these states. Like if you, take, if you consume psychedelics, or if you meditate, or, or in yoga, in some ways, you, you reach the stage of ego death, not having a self. These are supposed to be precursors, preconditions to enlightenment. And as usual, when Western quote-unquote luminaries, from Jung to Tolly, they took these concepts from the East and they messed up these pure concepts erroneously and egregiously conflating ego, which is a clinical term in psychoanalysis, self, which is a clinical term in psychoanalysis, including Jungian psychoanalysis, identity, proprioception, they made a holy mess. These self-styled spiritual gurus, Eckhart Tolle first and foremost, made a bloody mess of all these concepts created the equivalent of a word salad and sold it to you, the brain dead masses. The field is so hopelessly muddled that it had become comically meaningless and useless and haunted by new age logoria. Look it up. Even when one peels off all the layers of the onion, the smell of the onion lingers. Someone, when, you, when you're enlightened, someone is enlightened. There is a person there who is enlightened. Someone experiences annulment, endures oceanic feelings, merges with the universe, and is guided and instructed by the sages. There must be someone there, as Descartes had observed correctly. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. I. There must be an I. There is no escaping being. You cannot escape being. What we can avoid with lots of hard and unrelenting work and tedious practice are the categories of existence, the ways in which we had perceived and organized the world hitherto, the boundaries, the restrictions, the inhibitions imposed on us by socialization, by our sensor, by our mind, and by the baggage of social mores and cultural edicts that attend to all the above. We can get in direct touch with reality in a manner not mediated, obstructed, or obfuscated by narratives, including our personal narrative, or by language. But it would still be us. To get in touch with reality directly, you need to be there. There's someone there. There's still be someone accomplishing all this. Cartesian kernels of consciousness, however minimized, however transformed, one ought to read the brilliant works of Moshe Kroy in Israel to realize how badly we have strayed from, from uh, in the West, we have strayed from the true messages of traditions such as Sufism, Kabbalah, Buddhism and Zen Buddhism and other venerable schools of thought about non-thought. So no, no way did I borrow from Tolly, no way do I have anything in common with him and his uh, ilk which I hold in extreme, profound contempt, apropos the topic of this video. I will not be identified with these fakes. The principle of nothingness, as I propound it, it's a combination of self-awareness, self-awareness, on the contrary, an enhancement of the self, leveraging the ego, reconstructing it if needed, the main problem in narcissism is that the ego is dead. And so the narcissist resorts to other people to fulfill his dead ego's functions. So my principle of nothingness is resuscitating the ego. It's enhancing the self, constellating the self, creating um, self-awareness at a higher level. 
followed, this is followed by total acceptance of everything, especially and first of all of yourself. Once you become self-aware, you are on the path to self-acceptance and from there to self-love. Self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-love, and these negate the need to find meaning in life. Once you have this, you don't need to find meaning in life. That's where I clash with Viktor Frankl and lesser extensions like Jordan Peterson. Once you have this, you don't need to find meaning in life. You don't need to compare yourself to any standard, any expectation, any rule or combination of rules, internal or external. You just are. But as distinct from Eckhart Tolle and the others, you are. My principle of nothingness says that the only way you can truly be and exist is to vanish, to not be and exist as, as others expect you to be and exist. Right now, you think you are. You are not. What's happening right now is that you are defined by the plethora and the network of your interactions with myriad other people in your past, in your future, in your presence, in your present. And the people in your past, they are in your head. They've invaded your mind in the form of introjects. My principle of nothingness is getting rid of all this baggage, purifying, unadulterating yourself so that there's a kernel, a core, a diamond, a crystal of yourself left. This is the ego. It's not ego death. It's not ego death. It's ego resuscitation. It's ego revival. It's exactly the opposite of Tony and his misinterpretation of Eastern traditions. Okay, got it, kiddos. Let's continue.